Hello, welcome to number seven ministries Christian outreach. Today's short sermonette is called the love that changes. One of the things that God wants his children to do is to be free to love one another. And Jesus said, if you love one another, then you will be my disciple. See, God is uh, very concerned about people. He's very concerned about the world and he knows that if we are free as the body of Christ to love one another, he knows that the devil is going to be defeated in every way, shape, or form. Every tack, everything that he uh, tries to rise up against us, our love is going to cover whatever he can do and therefore he'll be defeated. But the body of Christ needs to also be forgiven by God to love other people and the body of of Christ needs to forgive other people to be loved by God and to be free to love other people so that they have an opportunity to change because I will tell you that when someone is loving you unconditionally it will affect you when someone is not judging you they're not looking for your fault and all they're trying to do is just love you and meet your needs and provide for you and take care of you it's hard to have a hard heart against that person who's loving you. And that's what God desires, is for us to demonstrate in word and in deed the love that's going to change one another. The Bible verse that I would like to read is 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. And it says, We love because he first loved us. Listen to what the Bible's saying. He's saying that we loved not because we loved God first, but because God loved us first. And see, this is the thing. We cannot demonstrate the love that's going to change other people unless we've received first the love from God. And we can't give what we don't have. But when God gives us the love and God gives us forgiveness, it's easy to forgive other people. Now, this is the thing. Because he first loved us, do you know that children are not born loving other people? They may have an emotional attachment, they may have desires, and they may have uh, uh, sensualism, but they don't have love from God because they can't give what they haven't received. And people need to be born again. They need to be filled with the Holy Spirit in order to love someone else. Otherwise, the love that you're receiving or that you're giving to other people or receiving from other people, it's superficial. It's based on conditions and it's based on terms. But the love that comes from God is unconditional. The love that comes from a true child of God is unconditional as well. And see, children are born selfish. Children are born manipulating, children are born greedy, and they're not born selfless. It takes the Holy Spirit to come inside of us and teach us how to love. I'm 33 years old, and still to this day, God is teaching me how to love other people. And in fact, God will teach you in every single instance how to love someone else because every situation is different. And moment by moment, God will teach you by the Holy Spirit how and when to love another person. The next Bible verse that I would like to read is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Ladies, this is not against women. Why does it only say son? No, it's editorially speaking. It's for male and female. God chastens every person that he receives. What does that mean? That means that in order for you to be received by God, in order for you to receive God, you need God to chasten you. In fact, when we get consumed with the world, when we get consumed with the desires of our own heart, when we get consumed with lust and greed, materialism, it hardens our heart. And whatever the addiction is, whether it's self-righteousness or pride, it doesn't matter. We need God to chasten us, to free us from whatever it is that the devil holds us captive of. We absolutely need. And if you're battling from sin, if you're battling from any addiction, it doesn't matter what it is, it's because you've not received recently a good 
Heavenly Father spanking. And I guarantee when you get that heavy hand from the Lord, it's out of love, not because he hates you. It's because he cares about you. When you receive that heavy hand, when you receive that spanking from your Heavenly Father, I guarantee you will no longer be battling with that addiction. And should we pray from a spanking from above? No, we shouldn't pray, but God is going to give us exactly what he needs. The Bible says if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. And I want to confirm to you that God is not going to spoil us and God is not going to spare his rod. He knows exactly what we need. He will deal with each child differently according to what he judges to be right. God deals with every person according to what is need, according to their situation, and everyone is different. And so God knows exactly strategically how to deal with us because he's all knowing, he's all powerful, and he's all loving. The next thing that I would like to mention is about uh, a man that was on a motorcycle. I met him yesterday, a real beautiful person. He got in a uh, motorcycle accident and he almost died he showed me the scars that he had on his head he had like a, a shape of a scar from here all the way around his head like here and the same thing on the other side from here all the way around to here the uh, there was where they did the surgery they actually removed his skull or his cranium so that they could perform brain surgery on this guy and this is what happened the man was driving this way right and another car cr crashed in what they call a t-bone accident t-bone this man dead center of his motorcycle and the man was unconscious he blacked out he was in a coma for three weeks he almost died he was so close to death but this is what happened in the process of the doctor doing the brain surgery the doctor found that that man had a brain aneurysm and the uh, doctor removed it and freed him from another near-death experience he was gonna die of a brain aneurysm I actually have a friend who's a pastor who died uh, last year of a brain aneurysm it came out of nowhere he was in good condition and he went to the hospital one day and then the following week he died of the brain aneurysm and that could have been this guy on the motorcycle and this man was so full of appreciation and so full of joy because God spared his life he knew God spared his life you know he told me about it the man was a walking miracle and this is what I want to say is that there are things that will take place in your life and you might judge oh God is punishing me God is uh, dealing with me so harshly but listen you don't understand what God is doing for your future God knows what we need to go through so that we can grow and so that we can mature and so that we could be better Christians and ultimately so that we could be free to love others so that they could be free to love others and hence the spiritual warfare will take place the next Bible verse that I would like to read is Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19 and when I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them and I will take the stony heart of their flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh we absolutely need outside of ourselves of no doing of ourselves we need the Father God to come down from heaven and perform spiritual surgery on our heart we need God to loosen up the hard heart we need God to cast out demons and cast out greed and anything that is ungodly and we need God to replace it with his Holy Spirit spirit and then when that happens we will receive the love that changes not just changes us but changes other people through us god bless you and thank you for listening to this short sermonette and feel free to leave comments and uh, uh send me mail i love to receive all that god bless you and have a wonderful day